I've started here working on a uh, juicer. Angela posted that she would like to make a juicer. So I've gone ahead and done a few steps just because my videos are taking so long to upload if I have big chunks to cut out. So I rolled out some slabs and I've got two different sizes here. This first one I did, I cut um, exactly the size of the little saucer I'm going to use. The second one I cut bigger. I used a pie plate as a circle, but anything will do just to make it a nice round. You could just make a paper template as well. And rather than using coils, I think making slabs and slumping or um, using a form is gonna be much easier and quicker and less frustrating than trying to make coils. And this part that I've made the juicer part to sit in the center is a pinch pot. Now you could also make your base as a pinch pot as well if you want a deeper bowl. The um, trick with using a bowl as a form is that a lot of bowls don't have, you need something fairly wide and shallow, which I didn't really see anything around of mine that would work for that because the bottom's gotta be fairly flat to put the juicer part in. So the juicer part is a pinch pot and to estimate how much clay I think I will need uh, this one's going to be for the bigger one here. Not that it's going to be that much bigger in the end, but if you kind of take your ball of clay and eyeball it, that's going to be plenty big. So it's better to air a little too big than too small. But if I figure I want the base to be probably about the size of this tape, as an estimate, and then if I can imagine that being hollow, that's plenty of clay. But if you haven't done a pinch pot, you wanna start with something fairly, fairly round and smooth and sticking your thumb in right in the center, but not all the way through and going around and pinching. Now this one, I'm also gonna kind of squeeze as I go with my left hand, trying to create that cone shape. So pinching a little bit, kind of every other pinch, squeeze, getting it. This is scrap clay. I may find some little air bubbles in there. This is my scraps after I cut my circles out from my slab and going round and round. Now this can be fairly thin and it depends whether you think you're, I mean, if you're gonna be doing grapefruits, you're gonna want this to be pretty big. If you're gonna be juicing lemons, it can be a lot smaller, oranges in the middle. Um, personally, I don't have a juicer, so I'm excited to actually make one of these and try it out. And trying to keep it fairly even, we'll be able to change the shape a little bit later on. You can eyeball it once in a while. And don't forget it will shrink. So I'm gonna get a little bit deeper into the part that I've been squeezing here so it's not too heavy at the top. Of course, as soon as Angela made her post about the juicer, I immediately went online and there's so many different versions. This is a fairly simplified version. Uh, working on the wheel, it's a good example of doing the split, um, split throwing that we've done. Some of you have tried doing a, like a chip and dip, a veggie tray with a saucer in the center, a flower pot. It's another way to do a split throne piece, but this is kind of fun to do a, a hand-built one. And of course, depending on, if you're gonna be making yourself, you know, quite a bit of juice every day, you're gonna need a deeper vessel to catch it all versus just doing a lemon maybe for a recipe or something. So depending on what you need, some of the ones I saw online had, you know, entire bowls that you could fit underneath to collect the juice with holes in the top for the juice to drain down into the bowl underneath versus this one, which is just kind of a shallow saucer bowl on top. Um, not on top, but without the bowl underneath. And so no holes are needed. You may wanna put a spout on it. So that's looking fairly good. And then smoothing out the surface to get rid of a lot of the 
fingernail marks and fingerprints. But this is okay to be a little rough because you want it to, um, there's an air bubble there, smooth that out. You want it to be um, a little bit rough to get the juice out. So eyeballing that, that's pretty big. This is gonna not be quite that big, it's just gonna be deeper. And then you can see this one, the way I did it was I kind of created a flange to make it um, sit flat. This one's a little bit better. So if you can see that part's a little uneven, I'm gonna pull that down a little bit more, trying to make this more even. You don't want this to get too thin because that is where it's going to attach and you want some clay there to hold on to, but it doesn't need to be really thick or anything. And if you end up with some high spots, I like to have a little bit of water nearby, not a lot, but just be. All right, so it's a little thick right there, but otherwise it's pretty, pretty flat. Now, rather than carve out the lines, which is fine, it's um, a big lump right there. So when you set it down, you can kind of smooth it out a little bit more using that pressure from the base. So like I said, so you could take a tool, oh, I don't have a carving tool, and carve it out. The way I did this one, and I'm gonna try a different technique for my other one, was I took a pencil and just compressed that in to make each row. And then I can come back later on and smooth them out a little bit. But instead of carving, I've been pressing it in. It kind of a, might be better to use a, uh, one that's cut off that doesn't have the point there. So that's how I did this one. The other one I'm gonna do, oh, I also have one of these. If you took home one of these rubber tip tools, they would likely work too. This one's maybe a little wide. I'll give it a try. Yeah, I don't really like that. I'd be more apt to use the uh, handle, like the pencil, and press it in. Another option would be to use the wooden knife. I'll do that one on the opposite side. So this one's got a bit of a curve to it. Um, that one doesn't. Anything that will create the indent that you like. You can also start at the bottom and pull it up without squishing it too, too much. The knife would work fine. Make it a little bit thinner. So find what works that you like. And you can put as many as you like in there. Some of the ones I saw online had very few lines. I kind of think you need a bit more to get that juice flowing out of your citrus. Okay, put that off to the side. So this one I went ahead and cut the hole in it. I don't know if you can see, I traced a line around there. I set this on here, traced a line with pencil just to mark it. And then I cut a hole out of the center. So I'll have to come back and trim some of that later. Or you can go ahead and put it on and come back later and hollow, hollow it out from the other side. This just kind of starts the process. And, and then of course attaching, I've lost my serrated rib. There we 
And scoring here. A bit of water. And then lining it up with that pencil mark. And you could go all the way around. Now I have these on top of paper towel so that when I put them into my saucer, it will not stick. So I'm gonna line this up with the outside and press it down in. And any plate you have at home will do. And the other bigger one I'm gonna do so it will have a deeper it won't be any bigger necessarily, but it will have a deeper bowl. So spreading this over, and I can leave that for a little while. If you wanna put a spout on this and a handle, you can do that later. If you wanna do the spout, don't wait too long. Let it sit up a little bit just to get that shape. And then uh, you can take it out and do the spout. You could also add a spout later with another piece of clay. Rid of that little piece. Okay, and then my bigger one here. Move that out of the way. You can see I made a little X in the center. I used my ruler to measure and find the exact center. So when I put this on here, I can line it up fairly close. And if you really want to be exact, you can Go do some more measuring, just to make sure it's pretty close. Not quite two and a half. I need a shorter ruler so all my stuff's not in the way. Okay. I'll finish my lines there later. And now the second one, so I'm doing a bigger one just to show you. You don't have to be confined by the size of your form. If you want, I'm just gonna take that off since it's not attached. If you want it to be deeper, center it, you can certainly use a larger piece of clay and lift that up, bring it around to make it more of a, a deeper bowl. If you're trying to go too deep, you're gonna end up with too many ripples. Um, I think this one's enough that I can work them into a taller piece. So even though it's quite a bit above the edge of my plate, I can take one of these and make a spout. Make it deeper. So I have a little bit more, and this side's a little higher. I'm gonna scooch that over and redo my base. And just keep working this until it's as straight as I want it. So I'll keep working on that, come back and give you some finished photos. And again, there's my juicer. It's a little taller than this one, but I've got a little more height here. And if you decide that you've got this, ah, oh, it's too tall, just trim a little off the bottom here or pinch it out into a flange like that one was, and you can cut it off or incorporate it into the base. A 
handle might be nice, spout's nice. So I look forward to seeing your juicers, especially yours, Angela. All right, talk to you soon.